Welcome to Chess Ambassadors, and yet again we are discovering another mystery of chess. So today we are finding out the interesting enigma of the powers of the Queen. So welcome everybody. Today we'll be discussing one of the greatest mysteries of the whole history of chess. The actual change of the rules of chess which seems to have occurred in the late 15th century. Not much is known about this. We know chess was played from about 600 AD. Uh, that is probably in India and it travels to the West gradually and it becomes very popular in many areas. But there are no real rule changes to chess for about a thousand years until suddenly in the late 15th century the rules had changed and they think it maybe happened between 1470 and 1490. There were disputes did it mainly occur in Italy or Spain but the consensus is it maybe happened in Spain. We do not have clear evidence but what we'll do is to try and delve into this mystery and gather a few clues. So first let us have dear Devan explaining to us what were the actual changes in those rules. Take a look at this chessboard. Looks familiar, doesn't it? It's the same configuration of pieces you would have seen on any chessboard in India 1500 years ago. It's 8 by 8 same pieces. The only thing that has changed is the movement of the pieces, which happened between the brief period between 1470 and 1490. So, let's take the lovely pawn. In Indian chess, the pawn could only move one square forward at a time. However, under new rules, the pawn can move one or two squares at the first move. Next, we have, the new, we have the bishop, or as they were called then, the elephant, which does a two point, two square diagonal hop. Now, as you know, elephants are very good at hopping, so if an enemy piece, for example, was on c4, our bishop could not hop over it to safety, or hop over its own piece, and would have to move back to its original position. However, under new rules, the bishop now has full access to the whole diagonal and can move anywhere on its diagonal. So here, here. An interesting thing is the institution of castling. So, in castling, the king can move two squares to the left or right with the rook jumping over him barricading the king and protecting him in a corner under a pile of pawns. So why was there such a strong desire for, for the king to be protected? Well, that was a formation of a new piece called the queen. In Indian chess, instead of the queen, there was a piece called the king's advisor Fear or vizier, which would move by a one square diagonal, which made it even weaker than the king itself. Now the queen comprises of the rook and the bishop, and beforehand the king's advisor only had four moves, but now this has moved to 27, which is nearly a seven-fold increase in possible moves. Now, naturally, any enemy king would be fearing for his life, hence the institution of castling. So, the rules changed. We sort of know when, between 1470 and 1490. We're not exactly sure where. Maybe it was in Italy, but more probably it was in Spain. And following this thesis, perhaps we should look at the historical context of Spanish life at that time. Now, in the late 15th century, the Spanish country did not exist. It was a collection of warring states. Suddenly we find Isabella of Castile. 
She marries Ferdinand in 1869. Ferdinand of Aragon. She's queen, uh, the Queen of Castile, or in fact she becomes that in 1474. It takes her five years to actually make sure she is the Queen of Castile. But as she's married Ferdinand, then she can unite Aragon, which is in the east of the country, and Castile, which is the main part of Spain, and they form the Union of Crowns. That's the beginning of the new Spain. Things start to kick off from there. What they do is to push the Muslims out of Spain. They take 10 years to uh, capture Granada. So then they have control of the whole of Spain. They also push out the Jews in the long term. This may have been a bad idea, but it fitted the concept of let's have a crusade yeah, and fight for religion. As well as that, Queen Isabella funds or supports Columbus's expedition to America. This is incredibly profitable for Spain because <coughs> they conquer South America and gold starts to pour into the coffers of the Spanish treasury. That's not all. They're taking over the Netherlands. They're taking over the papacy. Isabel's uh, successor, Charles V, becomes Homan, Holy Roman Emperor. So they have a massive global empire out of what was, in a sense, nothing before. Almost out of nothing, Spain becomes the major power, not only in Europe, but the whole world. Now what's that got to do with Isabella? She is unusual because she's equal to Ferdinand in power. And also, she would have been educated in the Spanish court. Now, to tell us more about uh, Queen Isabella's education, let's listen to Dia. Isabella's education at court would have included the following occupations. Reading, spelling, writing, grammar, mathematics, art, chess, dancing, embroidery, music and religious studies. So that's quite a lot of things to learn. Have we got any evidence that she actually did play chess? We can tell from her life that she was a highly intelligent woman and that she took a great interest in military campaigns and the welfare of her troops by making sure they had many supplies. We also know that she cared a lot about the education of her subjects. And when Columbus came back from America, she made sure the slaves were freed. Finally, in her will, not only did she mention her achievements, she also mentioned her regrets of what she wished she had done. Right. Here is a picture of the young queen and her child. It's quite remarkable, as you can see, that she is sitting over a chessboard, and there is a checkerboard motif underneath being repeated. Quite. This may not have been an accident. If we uh, go down to the south of Spain, to the city of Granada, and we enter the and we enter the Hall of Kings in Alhambra, we would see on the ceiling this picture here. Here we can see that two people are engaged in a in a chess game, and you can quite noticeably see that one of the players is a woman. It is very clear that Isabella was a very accomplished chess player and had a very strong will. This is evident from when she chose her own husband, which was very unusual at the time. This is a frieze commissioned after the death of both sovereign. As you can see, the king is slightly higher than Isabel. However, if Isabel had still been alive, this definitely wouldn't have happened, as Elizabeth demanded and got equipalency. So that gives us the background to chess in Spain, and chess would have been a great part of the courtly life uh, of the day. I think we also should look at the actual game of chess. Uh, Arjun has discovered also very interesting facts about the Queen. So I'm looking at the checking power of the pieces. Why don't we put a king on e5? And a knight on e1. So, how many checks are there? Well, there are two. Knight d3, 
and knight f3. Now let's put a, a bishop on e1. How many checks are there now? Once again, two. On c3 and bishop g3. Let's try this with a rook. Let's put the rook on b1. How many checks are there now? Once again, two. Rook e1 and rook b5. So, I want you to remember this number as it will become useful later on. Although, fortunately, it's the same number, so hopefully it should be easier. Now, let's talk about the queen. So, the queen is an amalgam of a rook and a bishop. I mean, to be honest, it kind of looks like a rocket ship, you see? And so, with this new piece that Dear and Mike have been discussing, we have liftoff. Um, now, let's put a queen on d2. So, Mike, how many checks would you expect with the amalgam of the rook and the bishop? So, as we remember from earlier, we got two checks from the rook and two checks from the bishop. So, how many would you expect in total? Four. Yes, exactly. Now, let's put a queen on d2. Mike, how many checks are there now? Well I, well, I would say four, but there are more. Does that include the stupid checks in the way the queen gets taken? That does. So, on that note, we'll ask the viewers, how many checks do you see? So, we'll freeze the frame for five seconds, and then after that we will, if you need more time, please feel free to pause the video. So, welcome back. Now... Mike, how many did you count? Ah, uh, there were lots of them. I know that, Mike, but how many specifically? Seven, eight, maybe. I'll make it easier for you. I'll split the movement on the, of the queen into four axes. The horizontal, the vertical, as well as the left-leaning diagonal, and the right-leaning diagonal. So if we start with the horizontal, we have queen e2 check, queen h2 check, and queen b2 check. So therefore, on the horizontal axis, we have three checks. Now let's move on to the vertical axis. We have queen d4, queen d5, and queen d6 check. If we move on to the left-leaning diagonal, we have queen e1 check, as you can move backwards on the diagonal, queen c3, queen a5 check. If we move on to the right axis now, we have f4, g5, and e3 check. Therefore, with all the four axes, which all have three, we have 12 total checks. Yes, 4 times 3 is 12, but where on earth did you get all those extra checks from? It's quite amazing. Well, you see, Mike, the Queen not only moves and checks like a Rook, as well as move and check like a Bishop, but the Queen can move like a Rook, as well as check like a Bishop. Therefore, that adds two checks to each axis. Well, that is quite amazing and shows us the incredible power of the Queen. We could also add the fact that the Queen is also the two bishops. As you note, one bishop would be on one coloured squares and the other bishop would be on the other colour. But the Queen, by shifting to the right or left, up and down, can therefore get to another diagonal. So the Queen can actually have the role of both the bishops. It's not surprising with this immensely powerful piece the king took fight and rushes into the corner of the board and he doesn't come out until the queen has left the, the scene. I think the conclusion we can see from this is that the union of the rook and bishop
created this incredibly powerful piece. And in the same way, the union of Isabella and Ferdinand of Castile also created a new country, it discovered a new world, and ushered in a new age. Thank you guys for listening. Please feel free to subscribe and like.